Welcome, this is the latest project from the Mushroom Grow in El Paso. This is a hydronic HRV, so it's a heat recovery ventilator. This is a trial. I will put in the description below as I get some uh, results on this. I'll have some for the winter, and then I'll also have some in the summer, hopefully updated later on. So the idea is, this is the intake. This is coming in from outside. That's an exterior wall. And then there's a heat exchanger. That's a 60,000 BTU heat exchanger for like a furnace. Now I'm not gonna get 60,000 BTUs out of it because the heat difference isn't that much. I'm not blowing 1,000 degree air through it. I'm blowing 100 degree air through it or 20 or 12 degree air in the winter time. So right now it's winter time and we're trying to save a little bit of energy on the heater. We just have a little space heater. We're trying to save on energy by capturing some of that heat. Now here in El Paso, it's gonna be a bigger deal with um, cooling than heating. We cool with a ton and a half, almost two tons of air conditioning. Uh, we don't use a whole lot of heat. It doesn't get very cold here. It only gets down to like 20, maybe 15 at the coldest. So it's all PVC. You can see I used a, um, a water circulator for a, a furnace system. And it's a three speed one, so you can do high, low, or medium. So we can fine tune it as needed. It's going to get, it's not done yet. I just finished gluing it. I'll have another video on wiring it and controlling it and purging it and all that stuff. But um, it's gonna have a controller that's sensing the outside temperature. So, so it's only gonna kick on when it's like 40 degrees or, and below or when it's like 80 degrees and above and the air conditioners are going. Um, so the concept is you have the pump, okay? The pump sends the water into here and this is a three pass heat exchanger. So what happens is the, the coolant or water, it flows through it and then it goes towards the next row up. It goes to the next row up um, and then it, oh actually this is where it goes. It goes this way across and then back a row and then back. So what it happens is it has like three stages. So it gets colder and colder and colder or warmer and warmer and warmer as it goes through depending on if it's winter or summer. So, and you always want to have it reverse flow. So you have it, the air flowing this way and then the coolant flowing the opposite direction, okay? So it's gonna flow through there, out here, across over here, and I have little arrows everywhere to indicate um, what's what. You can see which way the coolant is flowing. Um, so the coolant flows down into the fruiting room. And all I have here, this one's actually done. The other one over there is not done. I need to put a little divider in. So it's a tote, same ones that I use for, for selling the mushrooms in. And then it's a old sign that I took off the street. Somebody had, you know, for sale sign or whatever, some spam. And um, then I put the heat exchanger on top of it. And it's just sitting on top of it for now. We still have to finish epoxy, not epoxying, but uh, gluing this down. Uh, make sure that you, you gotta have these whenever you're doing any kind of threaded coupling, otherwise you're gonna uh, be plagued with leaking threads. Um, and that also allows you to, one, drain the system over here, and two, remove this completely if you wanna, say, clean your fan, or replace it, or service, whatever the heck, you know, it it's, makes it serviceable. Um, so what's happening is that, that hot or cold air from the other heat exchanger is coming over here, and it's sucking the energy that was put into the, the heat or the um, air conditioner or whatever. So especially when it's 100 degrees out and it's sucking in 105 degree air, which is very common here in El Paso, and we're cooling it down with the, we have two air conditioners in the lab, we have a ton and a half and a three quarter ton up there. That's gonna cool it down to the 60s, okay? And then it's gonna get sucked out, so it's gonna chill this water and then put it back into the incoming air that's coming through at 105. So I have a, uh, my, my airflow meter. I'll use my airflow meter, try to figure out how many CFMs are coming through it, try to figure out how, what the heat differential is and see how effective it is. And I'll post all that in the description below. So uh, hopefully with time I can get this dialed in and hopefully it works as planned and save some money on heating and cooling. Uh, I hope you like this video. I'll have another one on how to wire it up with the controls. Um, and how to purge it and how exactly I have all the plumbing set up because that's a whole different beast uh, How I have it to where all the bubbles will come out. So all right, take it easy. Keep on mushrooming